راغبا في كل علم نافع ينمو العلم ويتقدم بتقنياته ومجالاته ومعه نطور أدواتنا في تقديم العلم الشرعي أكاديمية زاد زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن وتعلم الفقه الميسر عاملا بالشرع دون تعصب لفلان بشرى لنا زاد أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهدى أما بعد The scholars have differed Do we give zakat on other categories? So now crops and fruit We understand there are a number of hadiths covering it Gold and silver is crystal clear Trading goods the vast majority of scholars say we do. Now, what about other materials, other minerals? So, for example, when we talk about zakat on honey, the vast majority say that it is not mentioned in the Quran or in the Sunnah. Some scholars did mention that, well, this is something that you're making a wealth of, you're getting a lot of freebies, no pun intended, freebies, but again, do we give zakat on it? And the most authentic opinion is you don't give zakat on it unless you're selling it. So now it becomes trading goods. But if you're having beehives and you're collecting bee, uh, um, um, honey for yourself, there is no zakat, regardless of how much of it is there. Also, the issue of hidden treasures or buried treasures and metals and minerals. So, hidden treasures, we spoke about that, known as al-rakaz. And we said that the Prophet indicated that we have to give 20% if we find such a hidden treasure. And this is what the book says. I said to you, and this is my own opinion, that this is not zakat because this is not happening every year. It's a one shot that you give when you find this hidden treasure. So it is not considered to be zakat, but because jurors and fuqaha mentioned it in the books of zakat, so we mentioned it as well. And what is defined as a hidden treasure? It has to have the marks of pre-Islamic era. So when we see the engravings belonging to pre-Islamic era, the Byzantines, the Roman Empire, and the likes, then this is a hidden treasure or rakaz that we give 20%. But if we see that there are engravings or marks to indicate that this is from the Ottoman Empire or from the uh, Umayyad Khilafat. In this case, no, this is not a hidden treasure. This belongs to some Muslims and we have to deal with it as a lost item or a luqata. Now, uh, uh, moving on to another category, which is uh, metals and minerals. And again, the majority of scholars, they differ. Some consider this to be something that come to our possession without any effort or with some effort but with lots of great value. So we have to give zakat on it. The most authentic opinion is that it is not zakatable. It is because it's not mentioned in the Quran or in the Sunnah. Your, books, your book says that it falls under the category of having something coming from the ground. And Allah Azza wa Jal said in the Quran, spend 
from the good things which you have earned and from that which we have produced for you from the earth. So this is a gener genetic evidence, meaning everything that is produced from the earth, but this is what the book says, so you stick with that. The way I see it is that there is no evidence backing it up from the Quran or Sunnah, because then even sand, even rocks, anything that we excavate would be zakatable, and this is not mentioned in the Quran and in the Sunnah, so we should not consider that to be uh, the case and the fact, and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. So what is related to um, such minerals and metals? Anything that comes from the ground, such as iron, core iron, copper, uh, gold and silver is beside the point. This is yani, uh, uh, a given and we've agreed upon that. But also mercury and the likes because of what was mentioned in the ayah. And the scholars have divided the types of metals and minerals into three types. Solid metals that are melted by fire, such as gold, silver, iron, copper, lead, aluminium, and the likes. And then are, there are solid uh, minerals that cannot be melted by fire, such as rubies, um, and salt, and, and, and the likes. And then there's a third category, which is liquid material, minerals, or uh, in the form of gas, such as petroleum, tar, gas, and the like. So what is the zakat concept on, on this? Again, they say 2.5% on whatever is uh, coming from the ground. However, they don't give a threshold because it's not evaluated in the Quran and the Sunnah to be zakatable, but this is what they say, so we stick with it and we give 2.5% and we consider the threshold the same value of silver, which is 595 grams of silver. If we have the value in uh, copper or in iron then or above, then it's zakatable. Then we move on to talk about zakat on petroleum, oil, gas, and other mineral resources. So again, it's an issue of dispute. Either it is public property or private property. If it's owned by the government and it's public property, there is no zakat on it. Even if it's gold or silver, some say, because there is no specific owner for it. What do you mean? I'll give you an example. If I'm collecting money to get married, God forbid, or I'm collecting money to build a house, after one year, I have to give zakat on this wealth that I've accumulated and saved. Though it is for a specific purpose, I have to give zakat every single year on this wealth that I have. But if I'm collecting money to build a masjid, now this money is not mine anymore. It is for the general public, for the welfare of the Muslims. If I'm a charity organization, I'm collecting zakat or charity. After one year, I do not give zakat on this wealth because this is not owned by a specific individual. If we have a, uh, um, a portfolio where all members of the family put like $10,000 uh, a year each just for the welfare of the family. So one of us has a crisis or an accident or his house is burnt, we take from this portfolio and pay for him. It doesn't belong to any of us. We gave its ownership to the welfare of the family. There is no zakat on it. So when the oil, the gas, the natural resources belong to the public, to the Muslim government, there is no zakat on it. But if it's private property, which is not 
the case in any of the Muslim world because the government would confiscate this on the spot. But hypothetically, if there's a country where I possess a piece of land and I discover an oil well and it belongs to me, what am I going to do with it? I'm going to sell the oil. Then it becomes zakatable because it becomes trading uh, uh, goods and I have to give zakat on it. And Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله نبينا محمد يا راغبا في كل علم نافع ينمو العلم ويتقدم بتقنياته ومجالاته ومعه نطور أدواتنا في تقديم العلم الشرعي أكاديمية زاد زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن وتعلم الفقه الميسر عاملا بالشرع دون تعصب لفلان بشرى ننازات أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان